This is Bear E. Vaynerchuk. I have a little prediction for this weekend. Now let's taste some more. Smells like the turf that the Bears receiver has kicking up in the nose of the Jets defender running for a touchdown. Good smell. Now let's taste this one. Tastes like Jets quarterback after Erlacher has a big sack. Let's get on with the show. You're watching Wine Library TV, and here's your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Wine Library TV. I'm your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. The Bears code for all of you that live in Chicago or Illinois, I'll include all of you, is the Bears suck. S U X. You want free shipping? You're going to have to type it in. D A Bears S U X. You're going to have to type it in. Tough game, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's enough about football. We're here to taste wine, and we've got a very cool thing going on. A lot of people have been asking for blind tastings, and we've got it. We're going to do our first blind tastings. These are uh, these uh, wonderful bags were brought to us by baggedwines.com. Check them out, we thank you guys. They're really uh, nice little bags, but what I did notice, and this is not a knock, but if you're doing double blind, which means nobody knows what the wines are when you go to a party, these are great. But if you're doing single blind, and that's what we're doing today, because I do know what the wines are, because I have a theme I'll tell you about in a minute, they don't cover the neck all the way through. They cover the neck. And it's no problem, I took everything off so they're just clear bottles as you can see. But what this will help me do is I'm trying to pick five wines with the same basic bottle shape. I want no cheating, no hints, nothing to help me. And uh, and because of that, that's uh, why I chose these five. And more importantly, this is why I chose these five. These are all in the $50 price range. And for my good friend Gilbert Hammer, who's got a really cool site, good guy that I met uh, through the Yahoo people, he's got a site coming out for his IPTV Top 50. And so we're doing Top five wines in the $50 range blind. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring my friend Adriel, who does a lot of the graphics here at winelibrary.com, he's gonna mix it up and put them in the different bags and I'm gonna put my coat over my head. Adriel, get over here. The coat on the head. Make sure you tie him up. This must be riveting TV. <laughs> hey, we should have cut to commercial. How many did you get done? Three. Nice. It's fine. <laughs> you mixed up the order, right? I'm going to do that next. But did you tie them one through five, like the way they are? No. Did you? I just went, uh... Okay, good. That's it. That's all I need to know. Bagging them up. I figured the more ch it should be more challenging even this way. Good. You done? Nope. <laughs> this is the best part. some good TV, huh folks? I'm sure you enjoyed that. I'm sure you're going to fast forward that if you ever watch that again. All right, so I, I guess I'll just taste them in the order with the way the numbers are. So that's what I'll do. But clearly we wanted to do this so nobody thought we were cheating. So, all right, let's get into it. I still have my Jets football. I still have it. I'm still a Jets fan. I'm not wavered by yesterday's results. Okay, here we go. Wine number two. 
This should be a lot of fun. I'm really excited because I know a lot of you have been asking for it. And um, this is uh, going to uh, be a good tasting for us. So let's do it. I've got the pink shirt on for luck. And let's taste some wine. Good chocolate nose, a little bit of raspberry, hints of blackberry. Most of these were Cabernet based. We did have the one Tinto de Toro, the uh, Numantia. Uh, we also had the uh, the uh, Viator, which was a 50-50 blend basically. So nice mix of really interesting wines. I'm really excited to try some of these. And I don't remember having any of them, so this is really going to be a real blind tasting. Really nice, great dark chocolate, very good raspberry, nice jam aspects, a, a little bit of a, a hint of a, a watermelon plum, very exotic fruit flavors to the finish. I would say almost like cherry with a little bit of sugar as well. High residual sugar for this red wine. I'm getting a lot of fruitiness, um, but it's not sweet in any way, it's just it's the, the fruit of the flavors. Very nice tannins, nice grip, nice long finish, little, little bit of heat on the finish, but very well structured, very profound, very big. I like this wine. Let's go um, 92 to 93 points. Great with hanger steak. I, right away I thought, you know, mashed potatoes, steak, even like a peppered steak because this has enough uh, stuffing to really go with that pairing. I like this wine. This wine gives me the tannins and the balance to make me think this wine will last for about seven to 10 years easy and I'm gonna go 92 to 93 points. I like this. As a matter of fact, to keep better scoring, the uh, bagged wine people have a little little thing. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out how we're doing this. As you can see, we're doing it pretty um, impromptu. So I'm going to give uh, wine number two a 92 to 93. Okay. Let's move on. That was a really good start. And all of these are pretty good wines. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun because uh, obviously... Top $50 wines is the theme. Wine number four. You wanna zoom in on this great label? <laughs> Just kidding. Wow, much, much darker color than, uh, than wine number one. Very, uh, very, um, has a very obvious smokiness of um, almost like a, a hint of smoked ham poured with a, uh, you know, covered with a uh, cherry Coke. You know, so I'm getting a lot of cherry Coca-Cola aspects to it, as well as a little bit of a cured ham. Really intense blackberry flavors coming through. This wine tastes a little bit more old world, making me think it's gonna probably be the Spanish wine. Um, very dry, very complex, um, got very dry, young, again, I know the Numantia we had was the 04, so again, thinking possibly this is the Numantia, very black. Nice black cherry, good firm tannins, silky smooth, pretty oaked on the finish, which makes me then wonder, okay, maybe it's Cabernet, but I like it, it's a little bit drier than wine number two. Um, it's maybe not as rounded. It's a solid effort, a nice bottle of wine. The silky smooth finish make it a 90 point wine, but that's where I'm gonna stop. I'm not completely blown away by wine number four. Um, I think it's trying to find its way. It might be a little too young for this wine. All of these are. They've been open for, um, God, it's late. Um, four and a half hours, so they've had a lot of breathing. But uh, this is a little bit more old world. I'm getting a little bit of leather, little little saddle, um, and uh, and um, and black blackberry. Nice. I mean, not 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 a wine I would kick out of my cellar, but um, definitely not as good as wine number two. Let's move on. Numero three. Give a little rinse. 
So I hope everybody had a good weekend. We have something uh, in store for Black Friday I'll be announcing tomorrow. Um, I know a lot of you are coming up. I read in the Wine Library TV forums. If you haven't been in the forums yet, they're up here. Check it out. It's really cool what's going on there. A lot of people have registered, about 250 already. A lot of great chatting, a lot of great information. Share your thoughts, your dreams, your aspirations. Wine number three. Coming a little vegetal, a little broccoli, a little bit of asparagus. English peas come to mind. I like that. But it's very vegetal and uh, makes you think Cabernet for sure. Nice tangy aspect to the red wine. I kind of like that. It's refreshing on the mid palate. Um, zesty, little bounce, little pep to its step. But very green and very thin on the finish. Uh, definitely not as heavy as the first two wines. Um, a little bit of a lighter style wine. Elegant. Again, if this was double blind, and we will do a double blind, excuse me, I would almost maybe even think New World Bordeaux because it's very, it's a little more medium bodied but um, but it's it's juicy enough with uh, the strawberry juice and the uh, cherry juice that flavors that I'm getting through um, to make me think New World. Um, I like it, it's solid, it's rounded. Let's go 90 points as well on this, wine number three. Um, I don't know, it, it's, it's reminds, it reminds me of a good solid Bordeaux. Um, given the $50 price range all these wines are, I would not recommend this wine. I would give it a pass because to me this is more of a $30 wine. This would go really well though with lamb and duck and lighter style foods than a big steak. A little bit less uh, sauces needed because it's just it's more of an elegant wine from that standpoint. Obviously not as light as Pinot Noir, but um, it's, it's well made, just hasn't changed my life. Number five, my favorite number in the world. So hopefully Adriel mixed this up nice and good and I will like this wine. Let's see what's going on here. Great news, really exotic actually. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of licorice, a little bit of tobacco. Um, Red, little red sweet currants, a little bit of raspberry with sugar on top. This I like, very aromatic, very nice nose. Wow. Wow. We have a huge winner. Wow, I'm getting great mocha, a little bit of espresso as well. Those classics, really this smells like a Starbucks. This, you know, $50 is cheap to buy a Starbucks, Starbucks, you know. So, you know, this is easily the best wine of the flight so far. Mm. How often do you see that? I can't even spit it. Wow. Silky smooth finish, I mean, this is what a New World explosive Colt Cabernet wine should taste like. If I didn't know better, and once again, I'm starting to regret single blind because I think we're gonna do this double blind because it's even gonna be better. Um, I would have thought they snuck in a two, three hundred dollar bottle of Harlan or Bryant family. It's got that kind of stuff going on. I'm dying to see what this is. I mean, black pepper, um, tons of fruit, you know, even even like orange peel. Raspberry, I mean, bring out the Skittles, guys. Bring them out, because that's what exactly what comes to mind here. Strawberry jam. This is the bottle that I am gonna drink when the New York Jets beat the Bears in this year's Super Bowl. We had you. Wine number one. Number five was amazing. You know, it just came to mind, maybe through Eric waving at me, that I didn't score the wine. 
And so I'm going to score wine number five. So um, let's go 95 points. It's just that good. It is spectacular. And, uh, and if I wasn't thrown off by this, I might have even given it 96 points. Now it was really great. You'll definitely enjoy that. Wine number one. Smells like concrete, which is interesting. We poured a lot of concrete in Wine Library's building, so I was smelling it every day. Uh, I'm also getting a little hint of just a tad of blueberry, maybe like the scratch and sniff, you know, the artificial blueberry smell. I'm getting a little bit of that, but this is a fairly tight nose. Maybe that's where the concrete's coming from. wine. Um, tight nose, austere, dry, off balance, a little bit of a little bit of funkiness going on, a little funk in the trunk, 88 points, which is not horrible, you know, but 88 points is horrible to me because I know this is a 50 or $60 bottle of wine. It's adequate, it's solid, but, you know, 20 Rose Cabernet is better at $15, so let's pass. All right, the fun part, let's unveil. So let me give you a little bit about blind tastings. If you decide to go with bagwine.com and use these, they're pretty nice. Um, or if you decide to, uh, uh, to disclose, they did send this to us for free, just so you know, so I wanna disclose that, I wanna be upfront. But uh, I'm big on brown paper bags, or some people use tin foil, which is really wild when I go to those. My teeth always hurt. But um, uh, these are pretty cool, and they're good people. And, uh, and so whatever you do with a blind tasting, here's the best way to do it. You do the blind tasting. I prefer double blind. I know we did single blind today, but I wanted to show you that I had no idea and I didn't know how to do it otherwise. If you have any ideas of how to do the double blind to really prove to you, I mean, I guess we could walk the store, two cameras, I don't know. But I really want to show you that we're really doing it true. Um, I know most of you know me and know that I would do it, but it's still fun that way. But if you do double blind, I'm babbling. Definitely, definitely get everybody together, score the notes, then you pick the, you know, you get the aggregate scores and you always go from bottom to the end. It's just a great way to do it. I do almost all my tastings that I do with people this way. It is an enormous amount of fun. And let me stop babbling. Let's open wine number one in dead last with 88 points is, I'm sure this winer will be thrilled when they watch this and watch this unveiled. In last place is Sardonis 2002 Cabernet. And I'm pretty darn sad because these are pretty good people. Um, 88 points, it didn't do for me. Small production, Howell Mountain, really good people, great wines, usually the 01 got a 90 from Parker, we've done really well, I think it's about $50. Um, this is not scored yet, and I don't like it, so we're just gonna have to move on. In second to last place, we have four and three tied. Based on my notes, I did make a little scratch that number three beat number four, uh, excuse me, number four beat number three slightly, so let's unveil number three, and this was a little bit more, uh huh. Viator, 2002. And again, this makes sense because we thought it was a little bit more Bordeaux like, and this is 51 cab, 49 cab franc, uh, 92 points, Wine Spectator, $65. We gave it a 90, but at $65, we're gonna have to give it a pass, throw four Z's on that, and let's move on. Wine number four. <laughs> Excuse me. Also 90 points, but had like a little plus by it. Is. Numanthia, interesting. Numanthia, which is uh, 90 points, which is 100% total, and, uh, and uh, is a uh, very well thought of winery. Uh, $42, not scored yet, but normally gets good 95, 96 points, 93 points from Parker. Uh, $42, Tinto de Toro, 70 to 100 year old vines. Um, and again, at 90 points, um, I don't know. Is that wine number three? Yeah. I don't know. Didn't didn't completely destroy me enough. And uh, forty two dollars is pretty fair for that price point, but I don't know. All right. Wine number five came in first, and wine number two came in second. Wine number two showed real well. Ninety two to ninety three points. I really like this wine. And it is 
Bona Cristiani 2002 Cabernet Sauvignon, only 302 cases made, 82 Cab, 15 Malbec, 3 Merlot, and uh, this comes in at about 70 US dollars. So it is a little higher, but I was going for that $50 feel, you know, uh, concept. But um, um, great wine. With the 15% Malbec probably had a lot to do with the way I like this. I really like the aromatics. I really like the mouthfeel. Um, $70, 93 points. It's pushing the QPR level, but this is an exceptional bottle of wine and you should really consider to uh, seek these guys out. They've been making some great wines. I've been really hot on them. And the winner, and the champion, and the 95 point wine is, oh, I forgot what I had actually. The O'Shaughnessy 2003 California Cabernet, 91 point Tanzer, $52. I am very impressed with this wine. I've known about this winery for a while and I've, uh, I've thought they've done a lot of cool things. I did not realize that their quality was this high. And to be honest with you, I wasn't so sure of the wines. I didn't even remember until we unveiled it what the fifth wine was. I am completely humbled. I would have not expected this. You know, maybe the Nemanthia could have won. Uh, I thought the Sardonis was gonna show a hell of a lot better. But the O'Shaughnessy, and that's what blind tastings are for, did extremely well. And you know what? We finally did it. We did a blind tasting. My question of the day is this. Why do you hate the Chicago Bears? We'll see you next time on Wine Library TV.